So we're still under attack. Yes, absolutely. Do we know who the enemy is? Is it Russia? Is it someone else? So who's, who's planning this compromise, this bad stuff? Well, as you noted, Facebook has not yet attributed the accounts that they took down yesterday. But experts who have looked at it do believe that it bears very similar hallmarks to what we saw from the Internet Research Agency um, what previously. Are those? What, are they, what are we looking for? Or what do we see when we go looking for this trouble? Are they trying to get the Democrats to look bad in the case of McCaskill, in the case of Shaheen? What, what are they up to? So what Facebook talked about, this coordinated inauthentic behavior, I think it's important to understand that what we're talking about is not necessarily about content. We're talking about behavior. They're trying to masquerade as Americans to either sow divisions among us, create greater polarization. That's a way to weaken us so we can't be talking about the real things we should be talking about as a country. Is this like kids in school where they send messages to their friends and they let their the one they're trying to hurt just happen to hear it? I mean, is this an attempt to just cause people to hate each other? It, that that's part of it. That's absolutely part of it. Part of it's also trying to shape our opinions on things. I used an example at today's hearing about how um, one of the messages we saw from the Internet Research Agency after the election, because this activity never stopped. So one of the posts we saw actually on Reddit, a platform that gets less talked about but was also used by the Internet Research Agency, sought to use the Flint water crisis and police brutality as a wedge to say, you know, countries aren't bombing us for police brutality and not taking care of the kids in Flint, Michigan, so why should we be bombing Syria for chemical weapons attack? Basically trying to shape Americans' opinion about foreign policy in a way that to the benefit of the Kremlin. Sounds like RT. Uh, Malcolm, your thoughts about, it seems like uh, the arsonists are still at it. We're trying to put out the first fire and they keep setting new ones. Well, you're absolutely right. And this is a major conflagration. But what we're seeing is the pilot light that's being set. I, I really think that what's going on with the Facebook uh, activity that we're seeing right now, which we know started last March in 2017 and has continued up into May and this year before Facebook caught it, is you're seeing the leading edge of what is going to start overwhelming us as we go up to the midterm. And I say it's the leading edge of an attack because this time they chose fake leftist extremist groups. They created a Mexican group, an African-American group, a radical resistance group, uh, even a spiritualist group. And they intended to use these organizations, fake organizations, as foils so that Trump supporters would have a target to Perfect. attack. You know, and they, we, you know, we so call right. this marionette. Create the idea that the Democrats are all hard, crazy leftists, and therefore they're an easy choice to go. Let me ask you about Trump's Trump's denial, his denialism, you might say, that's going on since this first third in the country's conscience. He he constantly says nothing happened. It's all a hoax. Blah blah blah. Witch hunt. How's that affected the transmission of this uh, this misinformation? Has it stopped it? Is it encouraged it or what? Well, one of the things that I emphasize today, as you saw in that clip, is that these mixed messages actually hinder our ability to deter the enemy. One of the things that any expert on deterrence will talk to you about is that messages need to be credible and they need to be backed by capability. We aren't credible in delivering threats if we have mixed messages coming in particular from the President of the United States. If you're Vladimir Putin, are you going to believe that you're going to face consequences for this continued activity? If you're not hearing it consistently, I don't think so. Well, Senate Republicans blocked the Democratic amendment that would have provided states with more election security funding ahead of the midterms. Interesting. Senator Bob Corker was the only Republican to vote in support of the amendment. Oklahoma Republican Senator James Langford said it was far too early to sign off on more money, despite reporting last week by the Daily Beast, Missouri, that Democratic uh, Senator Claire McCaskill was the first 2018 target by Russian hackers. And also, despite this warning from Director of National National Intelligence Dan Coats. I'm here to say the warning lights are blink blinking red again. Today, the digital infrastructure that serves this country is literally under attack. Russia has been the most aggressive foreign actor, no question. And they continue their efforts to undermine our democracy. Malcolm, I know this sounds primitive, but the fact is the president is out there saying that Russians are out to help the Democrats this fall. So why isn't he trying to stop the, the Russians? Because, I mean, I'm telling you, the only evidence we have is again that they're out to get McCaskill, who's a Democrat. They're not helping her. They're hurting her. Uh, well, look, the Republicans don't want to do anything to stop the Russians, even though they say the Russians are out 
to uh, help the Democrats. Explain this, will you? I mean, it's, I, it's hard to keep track of the claptrap we're getting from the White House on this stuff. Well, from the president himself, this is classic misdirection. And to tell you the truth, I was quite alarmed when he made that statement about the Russian. He's tough on Russia. The Russians are going to assist the Democrats. It almost sounded like he was sending orders to the Kremlin to now go after the, you know, and make it appear that the Democrats are going to do something. Look, if there is a blue wave this fall, even if it's a small one, the best thing that the Russians can do is introduce mayhem into the system to make it look like they were supporting the Democrats. Go out yeah. and hack a few voting machines. Go out and turn over a few uh, precinct ballots. And then the, the, the other side, the opposition, can use this to either call for the invalidation of the election itself or to create mayhem just short of civil war. The president himself is going to be responsible. And the Senate today, what they showed is they are not going to, they don't want to take the blame. They'll probably release some money early on towards the end of the, towards the election, but they don't want to do anything at all. Sometimes I think the president wants to destroy every institution in this country, not just the Democrats, but the courts, the media, every government agency, everything we hold dear so that he can be the phoenix that rises from the ashes. Thank you so much, Laura Rosenberger, and thank you, Malcolm Nance. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.